Hello, welcome to Bitter Feminist Podcast, the podcast where we talk about feminist issues from the perspective of an African woman living in Africa. I am your resident Bitter Feminist host, Ijoma. Like we said in the former episode, in every movement, there are adherents who dilute parts of it to suit them, then practice and part of that adulterated mix as the real thing same is obtainable in feminism and today we'll be talking about the second adulteration you're likely to encounter in the feminist movement feminist mores what is feminism mores it is when feminism is mixed with the moral beliefs of a person you see this happen when a feminist tries to pass off their moral ideals in the name of feminism or try to impute their personal beliefs into what they consider feminism This is when you hear things like, you can't be a feminist and be a side chick, it is wrong. How can you be a feminist and sleep with another woman's husband? A feminist has to carry herself elegantly and be prim and proper. A feminist should not move in with a man lest her value depreciates. Hold up. All these emerged from the person's moral point of view, not a feminist point of view. A prostitute can be a feminist. Sleeping with another woman's husband does not strip any woman of being a feminist. Cohabiting with any man takes nothing away from feminism. A feminist doesn't have to dress a certain way or be a certain way to prove that she is a feminist. Feminism, like we all know, is about equality of both genders in every aspect of life. It's about the woman being free to make her own choices despite what the society thinks. Feminists are made up of humans, good humans, average humans, bad humans, and it is okay. I don't know why people expect that anyone who bears a feminist tag must be well-behaved and saintly. I don't know why people demand for perfection from feminists. Demanding for perfection before one can be a feminist is an exclusionary tactic. Men tell you, oh, look at Chimamanda, see the way she dresses. That's how feminists are supposed to be. You don't get keep feminism to be what you want it to be. These are your opinion based on your personal beliefs, based on your moral beliefs, based on probably your religious beliefs because maybe your religion is not accepting of people who engage in transactional sex or your religion condemns it. It does not mean that feminism condemns it. You can look at it through your religious viewpoint but it doesn't matter as a feminist. When you come in as a feminist, you have to understand that A person can be a feminist and their feminism might not go down well with your moral beliefs. You have to give room for that. It's like when you enter politics, you're likely going to encounter people whose religious beliefs clash with yours. You're going to stay in the same political party with them, regardless of their um, religious views, personal beliefs, whatever. You will have to make do. You will have to make do with people whose personal beliefs clash with yours. Some time ago, I was thinking about how politicians have to be with people whose ideas and personal beliefs clash with theirs in the same political party. There's this um, senator, Nigerian senator, and when they brought a bill for ending child marriage, he was so against that bill, he opposed the bill because he got married to a nine-year-old girl. Now, I was thinking, how do other party members stay with this person? You know, how do they have him as a co-party member? How do they talk with him? Because everything about this man would conflict with what they believe in. You have to sit down with this person who is not only pro-child marriage, but also got married to a child. So it's a party. It's a political party. What joins them together is their love or affinity or whatever for that political party. And that is how it is. Likewise, when it comes to feminism, you're going to meet people whose moral ideals clash with yours. If you're a virgin or if you're a conservative, you're going to meet people who are sexually liberated, who don't care about what you do. The only thing joining you and that person is that both of you believe that both genders are equal. You don't have to project your ideas of morality towards them. You won't say, oh, because this person sleeps with married men or sleeps with men for money, he or she is no longer a feminist. Just like an APC member can't come out and say, because this particular senator is pro-child marriage, he's no longer an APC member. That's not how it works. For you to no longer be a member of APC, you have to renounce them, denounce them, give them back their party card, whatever, whatever. What you do, apart from that, does not make you a non-member of APC. Likewise, 
when it comes to feminism. How you live your life, whether you're a thief, whether you're a nun, as long as you advocate for equality of genders, as long as you believe it, then that is all you need. Demanding for perfection before one can be a feminist is an exclusionary tactic. Sometime this year, there was a mini war on Facebook Nigeria between single feminists and married feminists. I think we always have an annual war, but this one was different. Anyway, this particular war was because a married feminist claimed that a single feminist was flirting with her husband. Whether this was true or not, no one knew. However, in her rant against this person, she said the single feminist wasn't a true feminist for going after a married man that feminists don't sleep with married men. A lot of feminists agree with her and said that feminism is a sisterhood, so if you're sleeping with your sister's husband, that sister is in quotes, you're not a true feminist. One said it was an unwritten rule. Unwritten by whom? Who unwrote it? I didn't get the memo. Nobody told me that before you can be a feminist, you have to pinky swear not to touch anybody's husband. It was so silly and ridiculous because <laughs> it didn't make any sense. Let's flip this for a second. Men ask out married women all the time. The husbands of these married women don't go about saying men who ask their wives out are fake men or fake alpha men. But when a woman has an interest in a married man, some feminists will bang gavel and declare she is not a true feminist. First of all, desiring a married man has absolutely nothing to do with being a real feminist. We have all looked at Brad Pitt in his prime and swallowed a lump in our throat. Or a good Ibuka Obiu Chendo of BBN fame, knowing fully well he's married. If you guys haven't, I know I have. People are going to admire you, whether you are married or not. People look at Beyonce and, you know, objectify her. Say she's beautiful, say she's sexy. Just the same way people look at maybe Ibuka or Will Smith and go, oh, this is a beautiful man. People are going to admire people regardless of their marital status. Now, let's leave the admiration part. Asking out a married man doesn't mean a woman isn't a real feminist either. Personally, I think a woman who goes after a man she wants, whether he's married or not, is displaying feminist characteristics. I don't care if you agree or not, but that is what it is. It is rare for women to ask men out or make the first move because of social conditioning. They believe or they feel men are superior and they don't want to be perceived as desperate. So ultimately, any woman who jettisons all that social burden and asks out a man is displaying feminist ideals. And whether we like it or not, some people, including feminists, don't have any problems dating married people. There are men and women alike who knowingly date married men and women. A woman can be a feminist and date married men. It's like saying a fish isn't an aquatic animal because you can put it in a bowl of water or a mammoth aquarium and it will live on land. Feminism more seek to hold feminists to a higher standard than they hold normal women. Because you're a feminist, you're supposed to be a saint. Which is why we reject that kind of feminism. For so long, we have protested that women are held to higher standards of morality than men. It is okay when men drink, sleep around, or go to parties. But when a woman drinks or sleeps around or goes to parties, it's signs of end time, it means she's a slut, it's horrible, it's blah, 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 blah. Now, we are foisting that higher standard on feminists. We expect them to be better people than their non-feminist counterparts because of no other reason except that they believe and advocate for gender equality. It is very laughable. This is why we reject feminism more. You need to understand that feminists are not a selection of sense. Feminists are normal human beings. There are thieves, engineers, prostitutes, presidents, nuns, virgins, side chicks, mistresses who believe in feminism. Good people are and can be feminists. Bad people are and can be feminists. It is not an elite club made for only doctors and lawyers and virgins and married women and people who don't cheat or people who don't cheat with people. Feminism has absolutely nothing to do with your sense of morality. If you hear that a popular feminist was caught stealing at a shop, will you say she's not a true feminist because she steals? If yes, then you need to separate your moral ideals from feminism. Don't carry your Christian values, Muslim values, personal principles, and dump inside feminism. Feminism on its own is a standalone movement. You cannot say someone is no longer a feminist because they stole, lied, dated a married man, or generally behaved in a manner you consider inappropriate. Feminism is not a church. It is not a religion. It is not a cult where we hold hands and pinky swear to be on our best behavior. It is not a sisterhood where we vow not to touch each other's man. 
A woman can ride your husband six ways to Sunday and her feminist badge would be untainted. Feminism is not a solidarity movement. It is not a don't touch my man movement. It is not a sisterhood. The biggest adherents of feminism most are religious feminists or conservative feminists. They stay acting as feminist police. We have to be careful not to intertwine our religious beliefs, our personal beliefs, our personal principles with feminism. We have to be careful not to twist feminism into any which way just to justify our biases. Feminism doesn't revolve around your personal feelings, your marriage, your religion, or your culture. It is bigger than one person. Personally, I am not a fan of marriage and I do not seek or aspire to marry. However, it would be very silly of me to now say women who are desirous of marriage are not feminists. So if you don't like side chicks or you don't like mistresses, you can't just come out and say because you don't like them, because their behaviors clash with your moral principles, because your religion does not approve of them, then therefore they are not real feminists. That's not how it works. Address such issues from a moral point of view and not from the angle of feminism. As a Christian, your religion can be against adulterers thieves or side chicks, but don't insert your religious beliefs into feminism. It doesn't mean that adulterers, thieves or side chicks can't be feminists. You can be moralists and be feminists. You can be an immoralist and be a feminist. You can also be an amoralist and be a feminist. Just do well to separate your moralist, immoralist or amoralist views from feminism. And that is how we dethrone feminism wars. That's all for today. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of Bitter Feminist Podcast. Follow us at Bitter Feminist Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. You can drop your contributions, questions, or even hot takes on any of our social media platforms. I'm still your host, Ijama. See you on our next episode. Bye.